started. So the first question here is, how are you feeling? Tell me, we started this hackathon. It's the afternoon, or night for me, because I'm in Australia. How are you feeling so far in the hack for crisis? Is this your first hackathon? I have um, maybe some background information. Um, I have done and participated in around 30 hackathons over three years, over 10 years ago. So it's been a long time since I've been part of the hackathon community. And I run Hackathons Australia as well as Hackathons International. And I've seen a lot of you join it. So thank you very much for coming in and being part of the global network. So it might be new for a couple of you, but I've supported almost 500 hackathons because every year, you know, there are so many hackathons that come about and we just love sharing the hackathon bugs. So I hope you all feel inspired. <laughs> you get some goodies. You feel awesome, excited, fantastic. And I hope that, um, Tell me if I'm talking too fast or too slow so that you all keep up. So let me know when I'll be good to start. Just give me a thumbs up when it's good and then I can get it going. Thanks. My next question here is, what is your favorite travel destination? So I know that a lot of us are in quarantine or we can't get out of our houses. So I know a lot of us booked holidays. So do you have a favorite travel destination that you might wanna to go to afterwards? So remember just to go on menti.com if you have just joined and use the code 21, <laughs> 72, and 41. Um, if you have any questions, you can put them in the chat while we go through the presentation. But here we're just seeing what everyone's fav favorite travel destinations are. I love the one around wanting to eat a falafel. <laughs> that is amazing. Jerusalem, that is very close to you, all of you. So I'm guessing that is a hot favorite. We've got a couple that say Germany, Italy, France. I used to live in France, so I loved it there. Heaven, Morocco, Spain, UAE, Greece, UK and Italy. Jerusalem, the old city, Antarctica, Saudi Arabia. I love this. Excellent. And then one more question, just for me to know whether or not you have a team yet. So this is the last question. Tell me if you have a team or not. This is just useful to know, not just for me, but also for the organizers. Because if you don't have a team yet, if I open up, for example, Slack on my phone, if you are not on the Slack channel, it's very important to go on Slack. Um, the organizers will put the Slack link up on the chat. Um, but what you can do is on your phone, I'm not sure if you can see my phone, there's a channel called Team Formation. So if you head there, you can introduce yourself to everyone else in the hackathon and you can start forming teams and this is also part of this presentation. I can see that maybe half of you don't have a team yet and that is fine. We're here to learn and get to know each other. Okay, so I'm going to present my presentation now. So the core purpose of this presentation is really the secret recipe to manage a winning team. So we're gonna go through the team formation. So what you might need to look for in a person or a group 
of people who you may want to work with over the next couple of days. And then some tips on completing a one page template, which will help you solidify your vision and also what you would do and complete as a goal for the hackathon. I actually might put captions on here. Okay, so a little bit about myself. I am an international innovation hacker. I have run and done so many hackathons, I cannot think, but I know this is my first one for Palestine. So thank you very much for having me. As I said earlier, I have participated in around 30, I reckon I've participated in around 50 hackathons myself, and I've mentored, supported, organized, and judged around 500 hackathons all up in the past 10 years. So I love being creative, and I also really try to hustle to get things done. And I think that is one of the beauties of being part of a hackathon environment. So I got started with all these hackathons coming together and maybe a bit of background information. Um, it all started when we all said we were at the local pub and we said, how can we spread this hackathon bug to everyone and how could we solve real and meaningful problems? So here, at this hackathon at Hack the Crisis. It is a very um, serious situation and this is your opportunity to bring ideas to life. We want to see, especially as me, as one of the judges, I want to see tangible products that solve a real problem. And having that in mind, that is um, some, there are a lot of criteria that we have. So we'll also go through how to get the most out of it. So if you do want to follow this template that we will go through, feel free to go on the link. So HTTPS um, colon forward slash the hacker mindset. So if it's, a, it's case sensitive, meaning that if it's a capital T, it's a capital T. Um, if it's a small letter H, it's a small letter H. So it's bit.ly forward slash the hacker mindset. Or you can go on your phone and point it at the top right hand corner where the QR code is. That way you can download this. I'm just going to check the chat to see if there's anything. Um, quick is like thinkable. So um, what I'll do is if it doesn't work, I'll put it in here. Let me just so it'll be in the chat. It should work for everyone because I just tried it just then. Um, there you go. So Okie dokie. So my next thing is, this is all around um, what do you look for when you're recruiting for a team? So when it comes to forming a team, this is one of the most essential parts because you're trying to work with people, potentially with people that you have never worked with um, together as well. So the first thing I look for is a connection. So do I connect with this person? And do we have some common ground? One thing or one question that you could ask is, you know, what are you passionate about and what do you want to work on during this session? This is why when it comes to going on the Slack channel and going in the team formation, the first thing you want to do is introduce yourself. So for example, my name is Angela, I'm from Australia, and I really want to work on problems to help the elderly because I can see that my grandparents have been affected by the COVID-19 virus. So here you can see that A, you know what my name is, two, um, I'm from Australia, or there's some personal touch to you. So whether you say, you know, I'm really 
you know, I have been doing hackathons for the past two years, or I've never been to a hackathon, or I'm keen to learn more about building a startup, or I'm keen to learn about um, coding. Then the next thing is, what do you want to work on? So what is that passion that you have? And the important thing here is that passion is really at the top of what you want to do. And I'm sure a lot of you are passionate about different things. And so the next thing is identifying your purpose. So why have you chosen to participate in this hackathon? And knowing the reasons why is really bit beneficial for other players as well. So if, you, um, you know, Bill wants to have a startup with Sarah, who also wants to have a startup with Anna, but um, I know Ella doesn't want to have a startup. So there you can, there might be some conflicts because everyone's not on the same page. So you want to be in a group where everyone has the same goal and they want to know what they all want to achieve. So the first one is connection. The second one is around collaboration. So when it comes to talking with people one-on-one, -on -one, you might want to message someone to see if you could potentially want to be in a team. And I ask questions such as, um, what are you passionate about? What is your purpose? So back to that first point. The next thing I would ask is, what are your skills? So how can we complement one another? Because every different, every single person, we all have unique skills and strengths. So we need to do it in a way where we can work together as a team. And so in the hackathon environment, we have three types of people who go to hackathons. So you have the hustlers, the hipsters, and the hackers. The hustler is a person who um, sells an idea. The hipster is the person who designs the prototype. And the hacker is the person who creates the prototype. So here you have, you know, communication skills, selling skills, um, presentation skills. Um, and then the hipster, you have more design. So you're working on the wireframe, you're working on the user experience and user um, design. And then you have the hacker. So you might have a front end developer, a back end developer, um, someone to integrate APIs or a data scientist who might form part of that. So here is the minimum viable team. And you really want to get that richness of different skill sets so that you can collaborate and work together. So we recommend um, five or less. The best is um, between three and five as a team. And when you sign up your team in the registration form, the maximum is actually five people. So that's a really good number. The next one is creation. So we're gonna go through this as well, but this is all around creating that minimum awesome product. So a lot of the time we might think of creating something, what we call the MVP, so the minimum viable product. But here at a hackathon, let's create something that's awesome, that people really love, that's something that's feasible, and it's also profitable and sustainable as well. So make sure you can create that demonstration for that customer that you're solving the problem for. And the last one is commitment. So I know you guys are all here. You're proactive. Do things 110%. And why not 1,100%? Because this is your time to shine. So when it comes to different ways of working and what you'll be doing in this hackathon, um, it, you know, there's two modes that you can look into. So mode one is all around traditional management, not um, making mistakes, always trying to um, concentrate on execution and flawless planning. Whereas in a hackathon environment, we want you to be trying things. We want you to be testing things and we want you to be breaking things. This is a safe environment and we need your bold ideas and to do it in a way that is really, really, um, it is uncertain, but this is where innovation comes and plays. 
So when it comes to innovation, it's really change that adds value. It's not just the fancy disco balls in a taxi. It's actually getting someone from one place to another. And so how Uber does this in a really great way is that they've provided a service where you get the best service. You know, you might get a phone charger in your Uber or some minties um, and so and some water. I love that aspect. But also an Uber driver will get you from one place to another. So that intersection between novelty and need is where innovation is best played at. So when it comes to the hacker mindset, we put in the chat the link to download the template and it comes in three phases spotting the opportunity, building the solution and going. And remember, the purpose of this hacker mindset is to develop a strong team purpose so that everyone works cohesively together and it's all around learning. So failing to learn, but also having fun learning and creating something that's really valuable and tangible. So basically from all the hackathons that I've gone through, all of my tips and tricks, all of my hacks, it's all in this one template. I might just pause here to see if there are any. Okay, I will go slower. Thank you. Okay. So in, okay, let's get started. So SPOT stands for four things, story, people, opportunity, and your tests. So we're gonna go through story first. So story is about developing an emotive, compelling, story. So for example, you might want to look into a personal story that you have experienced. And you can use this framework of you know how they need to so that they can as an indicator to how you frame your story. So you know how the elderly in Australia are waking up at 6 a.m. in the morning. They need to buy groceries before everyone in the supermarket has come in so that they can feel comfortable and secure at home. It's quite interesting here because the you know how um, focuses on the person. So here I said the elderly. It could be my grandmother, my grandfather. Um, so you know how my grandma wakes up at 6 a.m in the morning, so they need to, so the, this group of people, they need to buy groceries. So that's the clear action because groceries for the elderly are only open with, um, and dedicated hours are given to them between 7 a.m. and 8 a.m. so that they can, and the outcome here is feel comfortable at home. So you've got a clear action point and what they will do. And then you've got the outcome, which is what they will achieve. The next one here is around people. So P here for spot stands for people. And this is where I've kind of already talked about but it's having and ensuring that everyone has and recognizes each other's diverse skill sets 
and to be inclusive of everyone. For example, if um, my friend has anxiety, you know, a lot of people have different, um, say, you know, disabilities. We need to ensure that everyone feels included because these people are super smart and they actually think about different things in depth. Same with people who are from different backgrounds, whether you are from one region um, or another region, a different country. That's awesome if you're from a different country because you may have and experience a different culture. So we need to be inclusive of these people. So when it comes to sharing what all of you do, it's always great to get to know each person as people. You, you are not colleagues yet, you are people. So here I've got your name. So what is your name? So for example, my name is Angela. People might call me Ella as my nickname. So you might want to ask each other, how do you want to call each other? What is your name? And then your purpose of participation. So why have you decided to join this hackathon? It might be for you to learn to code, which is awesome because that is what Gaza Sky Geeks does. Um, it might be networking. So meeting different people from different parts of the world, um, maybe expanding uh, your network. It might be winning because there are amazing prizes here up for grabs. It might be uh, just the experience. So, you know, for example, if you have never run your own startup, this is an example or a short snippet, a short snippet of what a startup experience could look like. Or maybe you want to test an idea. You might want to build your own startup. So the purpose of why you are at the hackathon is very important. The next one is around passion. So this is what you want to work on. Do you have an idea or do you want to help hospitals? Do you want to help um, the healthcare workers? Or do you want to improve the education um, in the system? Because there are no schools and no universities uh, right now. So what do you want to work on? The next one is participation. And participation is your availability. Some people, for example, um, might have children or they might have a family. So maybe their time would be dedicated more in the mornings or in the afternoons or in the late evenings when their children have slept. So what is your availability and what skills do you have to offer? Can you help with front end development, back end development, building websites, designing prototypes, what skills do you have to offer? And then the next thing is what a lot of people um, forget. So this is around personal development. What do you want to improve on? So when I first started doing hackathons, I sucked. I was not good at speaking. So I wanted to use hackathons in a way to practice my pitching. That is one example. And so if you do want to start your own startup, it's really important to discuss your intellectual property 
and see if you want to continue this solution moving forward. Um, you can also sign the Hack Code of Conduct um, and that's something which is a standard for all hackathons. I'm going to go to the chat to see if there is anything. A bit faster, no problem. So with the opportunity, this is around the opportunity statement. So similar to Twitter, where you have 140 characters or less, you need to communicate your vision and what you are going to achieve during this hackathon. So your vision might be to, I want to ensure that every single person over the age of 60 is getting the resources that they need to their homes within 24 hours. That is my vision for the world. So what are you gonna do during the hackathon? Are you going to develop a specialized delivery service so that the elderly will get their supermarket um, goods straight away? Or are you going to provide an aggregated platform where you can see the availability of all of the um, all of pasta and flour and everything in a supermarket? What exactly are you trying to do? Yes, sir, you raised your hand. Did you have a question? I will look in the chat. Okay, cool. So make sure you include the who, what, where, when, why, and how. So who is the problem you're solving for? The elderly, what are you doing? A specialized delivery service? Where are you gonna start? Probably in your country or in your local area, um, maybe in your local council. When is it gonna happen or how quickly? Within 24 hours? Why is it important? It's so that the elderly feel comfortable at home. And how are you going to do it? Um, this is something that you, gonna, you are going to have to figure out at the hackathon. The next one is test. So whenever I go to a hackathon, I get my team, I complete the first you know, um, couple of opportunities, I look into the opportunity statement and I write all the hypothesis down what is a fact and what isn't a fact yet. So for example, here, I have two assumptions based on the opportunity statement that I just talked about. The first one is the majority of the elderly get coronavirus. Um, this is an assumption because I don't know if this is true or not. There's a lot of media out there who have told us, but is this something that is factual and correct? So my, the data that I found is that early findings from China, which pertain to the first 17 people to die in the outbreak, reveal that the medium age was 75. And in a study in the New England Journal of Medicine, found that the median age of the first 425 people affected with the virus was 59. So here you can see that the assumptions are validated and it's a true fact. The next one is there is not enough food for Australians. I don't know if this is the same in your country, but in Australia, there is nothing in our supermarket because everyone's just been buying everything. And so here, according to the National Farmers Federation, imported food only accounts for 15% of daily supply. About two thirds of Australia's produce is exported, meaning we make plenty more than we actually consume. And for farmers, it's pretty much business as usual. So is this correct? Not really, because there's enough food for everyone. Maybe we need to look into the supply chain. 
I'll just pause here for some other things. Excellent. So the next stage is to build. And so you need to understand what goal you're trying to achieve at the hackathon. So will you build that specialized delivery service? Will you build a platform? Will you build a community of people who will help you? What are you building? And also keep in mind when the pitch date and time is, because this is very short and very pressurized. So what can we squeeze out of you to make it um, to make the most out of this experience? And also the communication platform. Everyone is on Slack, so it's really good to set up your own private channel, but also understand how you work together as a team, because instead of messaging each person individually, you want to message and have this cohesive conversation with the whole group. Share with each other a selfie or your favorite mug or even your workplace. So get to know each other. The next one is your criteria, and that's already on the website. I just looked that up. So make sure everything that you do um, is for the criteria. And when you check in with everyone, I always check in with people every three hours. So I have the 3D framework. So firstly, when you talk to each other as a team, discuss what um, each person has achieved. So what you've completed and the learnings that you received. The next one is destination. So agreeing what you want to do by the end of the hackathon and whether you need to adjust your course based on what you've done over the past three hours. And then it's direction. So reflecting on what you need to start, stop and restart. So ensuring that you have your goal or your destination in mind and you know what you need to do next. So a classic framework, and this is how I do hackathons because I've just gone to so many, when I participate in a hackathon, this is generally what I do with my team. Firstly, we nominate a herder. This is the person who keeps everyone on track. They are not the decision maker. They are the person who directs and makes sure that everyone is on, is headed, in the same direction and we are achieving our goals. Kind of like a shepherd you could say. So you have all your sheep and you have the herder who ensures that everyone's on the right track. So normally with the hustler, the hipster and the hacker, we join a team and then we complete the first oops, um, spot. So that's the first phase of this. Then normally we conceptualize the idea, do some customer research so that we are co-creating with our customers and also find the data and APIs that might be relevant to the um, project. I find this very useful because there's been a lot of hackathons I have participated in. We find the data and it's unclean and it's un it's so messy. So you need to make sure and understand your capabilities. Then you need to absolutely agree on this final problem statement. So who are you solving the problem for and what is the problem that you're solving? And then developing that minimum awesome product. So the thing after this is getting um, customer feedback, doing the script and filming and doing the pitch. That's super important for the hustler. For the hipster, it's all around designing the wireframe, what it looks like, testing it with customers to see whether the features are important or not. And then make sure it integrates 
with the front end build so that the APIs are working in conjunction with the prototype. Um, the hacker here really is to align all the features and to create that working prototype. So don't forget to celebrate because at the end, it's a big achievement for all of you. So make sure you do that. Just check the chat one more. So APIs are basically logics. So for example, you might use the Google Maps API. So using that API or that logic, it's basically similar to a formula. You can say, um, if you type in, for example, um, Italy. So if you type in Italy into Google Maps, there's an API engine behind that and it spits out the location of Italy. So that's the intention of an API and you need to configure them. And um, basically this is the job of the developer. You need to configure them to ensure that whatever your inputs are, the API does its job and the output is what you're looking for. So it's input, the API does its job and then the output. So the third and final phase is to go. And it's okay if after the hackathon, it's a no-go, that's fine. But if you do want to go, it's all around uh, growth, that's the G, and O is optimize. So growth is all around identifying who your customers are and the people you are targeting with your value proposition. How will you help? your customers' lives be easier. You know, Netflix is a great example of this because we don't need to pay lots of money to go to the cinema. We can just pay a subscription model and watch Netflix in our pajamas. And that's a wonderful thing to do. Content. So what are some content and assets that you want to give to demonstrate to the customer? Um, channels. So this might be through social media, through community channels and platforms. So how will you strategize and onboard customers? And then your call to action. So this is around how do you know what the next step is and closing the sale so that you can get the money to make yourself sustainable. Optimize is, this is more um, if you're interested in innovation, it's all around Horizon 1, Horizon 2, and Horizon 3. So Horizon 1 is um, developing new products and features, something that you might want to do in the short term. So for example, Disney, they have a lot of different Disney characters like Winnie the Pooh, um, like Aladdin, for example. So there's always new movies coming out. Horizon 2 is looking at new customers and new markets and new mar targets. And this might be Disneyland because it's a different experience. They still get to experience and meet um, Aladdin and you know all the great characters that are out there. And then Horizon 3 is all around building new business models. So this is where Disney Plus comes into place. And that's um, a whole different way of how Disney allows its customers to consume the products that they have or the experiences. So again, this is the link to download the template if you want to use it. It's very helpful, basically, all my tips and tricks from the past 10 years of my life in one single document. You can download it and you can use it. There's also an example on this which will show you how to use it as well as a glossary. So a glossary is a definition of all the terms on this document. So I just wanted to leave you with um, true innovation is not just about the technologies, but it's also around creating movements and creating change. And I want you to be starting these changes. I want to see them come to life. And I'm expecting 
big things from you guys. So I cannot wait to judge all your projects and see how that goes. So remember, keep calm and hack on. And so if you want to join the international hackathon community we are on facebook as a facebook group um, we're on twitter and also this is our website so feel free to join us we would love to have you and the most important thing is after you've completed the hackathon please put your projects and post it up on our um, facebook group because we're looking to see what the next best things are. Um, if you want to connect with me on LinkedIn, make sure you write a note and I'll be more than happy to give you um, a bit of advice, not too much because I'm one of the judges and I will leave some time now for questions and answers. I will open the chat up now. Does anyone have any questions? Doesn't seem like it crew, organisers, um, was there anything else to add? Okay, there are two, yep. Okie dokie, I know there are three other workshops happening. Don't forget to check out the website, um, especially with the criteria, it's all on there. Um, make sure you look at that important information for participants and also register yourself as a team. The most important thing for you right now is to go on Slack and head to the team formation channel. Remember, introduce yourself. What is your name? A little bit about yourself and then what is the purpose and that you're at the hackathon and what are you passionate about? Remember those things and make sure that you're on task, you know what you're doing, and I'll see you on the other side. Um, um, Angela, can you hear me? Okay, um, I'll, I'll take the question. I'll okay. ask it from here. Uh, and I'd just like to say to everyone else, um, to Angela especially, thank you very much for uh, delivering this session. Um, that was really very helpful for everyone, I guess. Um, now we have one question that I'm going to translate. Um, someone, Hanin, is saying that she's got an idea in the health sector. How can she guarantee that this idea has not been made before? How can she guarantee that it's unique and has something special about it? And what do you think are the things that she can do in order to build this idea in only three days? Um, and how to keep it, how to make it sustainable for the future? Good question. Uh, Thank I'm you. Sorry, I'm just going to say something in Arabic. Uh, Cool. So with um, seeing if whether your idea is unique or not, this is why we go on Google straight after we do our opportunity statement. That is the reason why we need to see who your competitors are, what else is out there, and, or, and to test your assumptions, because you might think that you have a brilliant idea, um, but ideas are fabulous, but execution is priceless. And I'm saying this because there are so many ideas that are said, but none of them are done. So be mindful of that. So what, what, what is your unique value proposition and what do you bring to the mix? What has 
everyone else done? And where is the gap? So understand where the gap is and slot yourself in there. That would be my hot tip. أصلاً I'll just translate this. حنين كمان مرة شكراً على سؤالك. بتسألي كيف تتأكد إنه الفكرة تبعتك هي مميزة ومش مكررة؟ الحل هذا مبدئياً إنك تروحي على جوجل هاي حلك. شو بتعملي في جوجل؟ بتبحثي عن كل الناس اللي فكرت بفكرة مشابهة، بفكرة قريبة من بعيدة أو قريبة اللي أنت بتحكيه. بتحاولي تدوري على كل المنافسين شو اللي عملوه كيف حلوا المشاكل القريبة وين الإشي اللي هم ما غطوه وهنا انت بتقدري تعرفي انه اوكي هاي الاشي المميز اللي بقدر اعمله لا تبني فكرة مش مقررة بدك تبحثي عن اي حدا قرب على المجال وتشوفي ايش اللي الناقص وتحاولي تحققيه اذا انت بتحقق الناقص وبتقدمي اشي ولا حدا غيرك بقدمه معناها هاي الفاليو بروبوزيشن تبعتك هاي الاشي اللي بيميزك انت عن اي حدا تاني كمان تذكري انه الافكار ما لها قيمة كتير اذا ما تنفذت فاذا 100 حدا حكى الفكره وانت الوحيده اللي نفذتيها وحققتيها معناها انت بتضلك يعني بنقدر نحكي مالك الفكره وبتضلها فكرتك مميزه. آه بتمنى يكون ال... بتمنى تكون الاجابه آه واضحه. And we have another question from Fadi. Uh, Fadi is asking Uh, when building an, a, an idea for like an online product, is it better to target one specific um, organization or institution or segment or to make it general? Um, good question. So with this, um, it's better to start with a single um, group of people in mind, knowing that there's an bigger opportunity. So we call that the total addressable market, the TAM. So when you are starting out, you need to identify who the target market is, that total addressable market, and then specifically the um, user group. So for example, it might be um, it's really easy to generalize, generalize people who are over 60 but you might want to say it's people over 60 who have just received a phone and they don't know how to install applications. And so that way you're more specific with knowing who exactly your target market is. Secondly, you need to understand who your early adopters are. So who are the people who are going to be your champions to test out your product to ensure it what works and what doesn't work and give you honest feedback. Thank you, Angela. Uh, so, Fadi, the question on your question will be the answer in a few The first point is, when you come to any business or any idea to build a product, you want to leave your mind that you want to define the market and this is a little bit small and you want to define the user group. هلا الماركت هو الاشي الاكبر قد يكون على سبيل المثال كل الناس اللي عمرها فوق 60 سنه موجوده بفلسطين هذا ماركت عام شويه بدك تحدد كمان جوا هذا الماركت جزء منه اسمها اليوزر جروب الناس اللي بدها تستخدم تطبيقها وهي قد تكون على سبيل المثال كل الناس اللي بفلسطين عمرها فوق 60 سنه اشترت موبايل او جوال خلال اخر شهر ولساتها ما بتعرف تستخدمه، هيك صارت اليوزر جروب تبعتك واضحه كثير. وبالتالي كل ما تطلع بفكره مش لازم تكون عامه، لازم تكون عارف تحديدا مين هي مين الماركت تبعك ومين الفئه اللي لازم تستخدمها. كمان نقطة ثانية مهم انك تطلع عليها، بدك تفكر مين هم اللي بنسميهم فيرست ادابترز، مين اول ناس رح تستخدم جهاء رح تستخدم التطبيق تبعك او البرودكت تبعك اول ما يطلع هم عاده الناس اللي بتكون دائما متحمسه لتجرب شيء جديد لتجرب التكنولوجيا، مين هم هدول الناس وكيف بدك تلاقيهم؟ فكمان مره ما ما تكونش الفكره عامه، اعرف مين الماركت واعرف مين التارجت يوزر تبعك. So someone is asking, he's not from a technical background, that M. Shamali, I, I'm not sure what's his first name. Um, he's not from a technical background, he knows nothing about coding, but he has a lot of knowledge um, in the health sector. 
what should he do in this case if he wants to build a product? That's awesome because sometimes we don't have enough people with experience and that's where um, hackathons really gel well. You need people with experience um, and have skills that they're willing to offer. So the first thing is well done for you for coming to this hackathon. Secondly, when you're introducing yourself, say, hi, my name is Blah. I've worked in the health industry for 15 years. I know the problems worth solving. And then the next thing is I'm passionate about whatever you want to work on. And the last thing you can say is I need help with Blah. Yeah, awesome. طيب شمالي اجابه على سؤالك اول شيء هذا سؤال كثير عظيم واحنا يعني انجل بتشكرك واحنا كمان بنشكرك على انضمامك للهاكاثون اليوم ويمكن هو هذا الهاكاثون هو المكان المناسب لك لتعرف شو تعمل يعني شو هي الخطوه الجايه هلا انت عندك تصور عن المشكله انت بتفهم كثير في هذا في هذا المجال في مجال الصحه وتحديدا في مجال مرضى غزير الكلى تمام فالشيء اللي انت بدك تعمله انك تلاقي الاكسبيرينس المناسبه عشان تبني البزنس تبعك او عشان تبني البرودكت اللي بدك تعمله لوحدك ما بتقدر تعمله انت لسه بدك اكسبيرينس حدا بالبزنس بدك اكسبيرينس بالتكنيكال بدك اكسبيرينس بالديزاين سو so الخطوه الجايه بالنسبه لك انك تروح في الهاكاثون على السلاك تقول انا فلان الفلاني انا بعرف كثير منيح عن انتقال مرضى غسيل الكلى لانه انا على سبيل المثال اشتغلت لمده سبع سنين بمجال الصحه انا عندي فكره او حتى لو ما عندك فكره انا ببحث عن حدا بده يشتغل معايا بنفس هذا المجال وببحث عن مطور ويب وببحث عن مصمم وبتتركها على سلاك وهي رح تكون احسن فرصه لك انك تكون الفريق اللازم اللي عنده الخبرات اللازمه لتكمل في شغلك. And then for Nail and for um, Mirbad and for um, M. Shamali was asking about the four. Uh, now, where do you يا يعني لنائل ولمربط ولام شمالي الاسئله اللي بتتعلق بالفورم كيف وين تكون التيم امتى الديدلاينز هاي كلها بتتعلق بالهاكاثون حطوها على سلاك اذا عندكم اسئله لانجلا على الشيء اللي حكته بتقدروا تحطوها هون سو اي جيس ذاتس اول Um, and I'm pretty sure this was very helpful for everyone. So once again, Angela, thank you so much. Um, and looking forward to seeing you in the judging panel. Yeah, I'm so excited. <laughs>